All right, so I just want to go over the control panel so we can see we have so much power right up in the control panel, this part right up in here. Now, again, depending upon what we have selected in our tools, it will change. So when I have my selection tool, my uh, direct selection tool, selected, this will change. Um, so I want to come on in. Let's actually look at some of these things that we have in here for type now. In a previous video, I had grouped this, so I'm going to ungroup it. And I'm actually going to select my type. And I can see once I have my type selected, I get this window. Even if I selected my type tool, I would get the same. If I wanted to come in, I could change my type one more time. I'm going to go to, why not? We'll try that one. Okay, there we have it. Now, um, I had switched this. I put everything into all caps. So with just one click of a button, this is the all caps button. Okay. And what's great too is you can come in here and just start working with the font size as well. Um, some other different things we have here. We come in. Here is the color for our font. We can click this right here. Now what we're looking at here, these are the swatches of the colors in this uh, project that we're working on right here. Um, so we could change it there very easily. We could also come on in and um, change the stroke color. Um, we can work with the kerning and the tracking. So let's start to take a look about uh, take a look at that for one minute. We can look at the horizontal scale. Um, so we can see I can start moving it across. And what's great, we could say that InDesign is a typography. It's all about type. It's, there's so much you can do with typography. I can even work with you know the amount of a slant. Okay, so very very specific, more so than we have in other in other types of programs. Now this is the baseline shift, and as we start to work with this, we can see um, how the whole object moves up. Now, of course, if I was to come in right after the S and start to work a little bit more with the baseline shift or just select one of these lines, then I can work with the amount of space between these two different lines of text. So if I wanted to bring them closer, I could do that. Again, maybe I want to make the point size of this a little bit smaller, I could do that as well. So I can come on in, maybe I want to make this into 30. Great. So I can affect things independently. Over here we have a line left, centering, a line right, um, and a lot of other things as well. For just this one line of text, this actually covers uh, quite a bit of what we want to do. Kerning. What is kerning? Well, kerning has to do with the amount of space between our letters. So maybe I want to take this term San Francisco and spread it out a little bit more. I could do it with kerning. If I wanted to bring it together, I would just go into the opposite direction. So there we have a little bit about that. Now, let's say if I was to just come on in and click on to this, or let's say if I click on to this graphic image, I can see that my box changes quite a bit. And there are a lot of different options that I have up in here too. So, and looking at this, um, I can start working with how this object is placed. So if I wanted to shift it, I could. So if I start taking this, I'm moving it, moving it around. Um, now what I want to show you right here are some of these, some of these effects. So maybe I want to put a drop shadow on it. They're all in here. I can, um, you know, look at the color of the drop shadow and I can work with the size of the drop shadow. It looks like this is actually coming out the back. So if I wanted to shift it, I could do that as well. So it's over here. I can say, okay, and there's a lot of other things. I could add an inner shadow if I'd like to. Lots of different, an outer glow, inner glow. There's a lot of different things inside of here. I could hit okay. Now let's take a look as I come on in to this object. Um, I can see this is in the red box right in here and I've just added that different layer style to it. So there we have it. Just know we just briefly went over some of these different things and in other videos in InDesign I'll cover even more of them. Uh, but as we click our different tools, these will change 
um, depending upon what it is that we have chosen. And there's quite a bit of information and different possibilities for creating very interesting layouts in InDesign directly from the control panel. Thanks so much.